Hello and welcome back to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Emily Rutherford Liskin. With me is Lynn Corley. And Lynn is a local citizen who has brought the passion of the 450th celebration of Jean Rabot's arrival at the St. John's River really to life. Uh, you've been, Lynn, hello and welcome. Thank you. Lynn, you have been the driving force behind the 450th celebration of Jean Rabot's arrival uh, at the St. John's. And of course, back during the 400th anniversary celebration, the quadricentennial, it seems like uh, all the major leading citizens of the city uh, took a role, and they started years in advance, just as you did this time for the 450th, promoting this, concerned about it, and uh, there was a huge uh, uh, performance in the Coliseum at the time. Of course, we have since imploded our Coliseum. <laughs> uh, there were just huge events. Names that people associate with our city were intimately involved in that. Now here we are 50 years later at the 450th celebration of Rabot's arrival. And it's interesting, events are happening that really harken back to wheel set in motion for at the 400th celebration. And we're going to talk about one of those events today, and that was the beloved Rabot mural. So we're starting there. So <laughs> that was a long introduction, but you're here to talk about the Rabot mural and the history of that mural. So I want to start and just give people a quick overview of that mural and how it came about. Well, to start, we would go back to Jean Rabot, obviously, May 1st, 1562, he arrived. May 2nd, 1562, he placed a column on the land that's now Mayport. And we have an image of that column we want to show, that, or what's believed to be. Right, we believe, it is. Um, depicted it is. by Jacques Lemoyne and printed in the DeVry, um collection in 1591. And let me interrupt to say Lemoyne was actually a colonist here. He was. Uh, uh, what now would be about 448 years ago, because the colony came a little after that original exploration by Rabot. So there's the column, okay. After 1591, that became a very uh, important piece of history and has remained for almost 450 years. We uh, in Jacksonville used that as an image to celebrate the 400th anniversary, the quadricentennial. And I believe probably Charles Bennett was the one leading this uh, parade as the city got ready to celebrate. And I have read as early as uh, 1955 plans were made for mm -hmm. that uh, 1962 through 1965 celebration. So in addition to the pageant that they put on, they um, instigated a plan to have a mural that depicted this Jean Ribot landing and a new Sears was about to be built downtown. And a regional manager got hold of this idea and convinced Sears to have a Ribot dining room and in that would be a wonderful painting depicting. And I think we have an image of that, that Sears. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that's not. But, but we'll keep going for a minute and we'll get back because this is a piece of the mural. The mural is 30 feet long, so this is the crucial centerpiece. This depicts the mural, uh, what we know that exists uh, today from 15, uh, 1959, and it was on the wall in that Sears dining room, the Rabot room. The Sears was the um, star in the Sears crown at that time. It was the largest Sears building. It was 260,000 square feet. And the wonderful thing about there this mural, there mm -hmm. it is in, uh, as it was built mm -hmm. down on our waterfront. Right on the waterfront and today roughly the Jacksonville, well not exactly the Jacksonville Landing. Jacksonville Landing would be just east of that. So go ahead, yes. So this mural, the wonderful thing in talking about this mural is that so many people my age and a little younger remember their mamas taking them to lunch at the Rabot Room. They I remember that mural. Unfortunately, I'm not a Jacksonville native and I did not remember. But what's also been fun is finding the mural again, as I did uh, in about 2003. 
and finding that there are still residents who posed for Lee Adams as he painted that, that mural for so, the Sears dining room. So there we have the tour de force Sears in the nation for a yes. point in time right here in Jacksonville, Florida. And when that store was being designed, the lunch room there was designed around the Rabo room, which they called it was. was designed around this 30 foot mural that's what eight and a half feet tall right correct and so this this really made an impact on all of our citizens at the time now and citizens were involved as you said yes as models for the images uh, and we want to look at some of that too so we'll maybe take a look at the next image here you go <laughs> uh, this is a close-up image from this massive mural we believe this is Minerva Mason uh, unfortunately, if you look closely, you'll see there's some little stains on the face, and that's what led us um, to believe there would be a good place to locate this, and it needed a little cleaning. And so, because it has been, it's been at the Lavilla School of the Arts for a period of time, quite a few years, about how about ten years? Not almost ten. Almost years, ten right. years, and it was in their lunch room. So, it, you know, uh, the students would occasionally not know through no fault of their own get a little ketchup or mustard stain here and there and um, so it, it's time for a restoration it and it's time to get it in a place where you know the La Villa school could not be constantly bothered with the public coming into their cafeteria right. so uh, tell everybody where this is going to go now this again Minerva Mason she was portraying one of the Tamuqua in right. this I'm going to regress. After the store okay. closed in 1981, that mural um, was offered to the city by Mr. Bernard Dance. And we could go to another image while you're telling and, it. And uh, he, he wanted to preserve that mural. And unfortunately, the city was unable to do that. Someone took the mural off the wall. We don't know exactly whom. We'd love to know whom. And that mural ended up at Lee High School in a box. and. The restoration came finally. The first restoration came in 1999, and then it did go to La Villa School of the Arts. Okay. It was Thank you for uh, a planned, um, it was a lobbied effort by Jane Condon, who was a planned principal for mm -hmm. that school, and she saw it as a wonderful opportunity to portray our history and to show wonderful art, art. to the students. Mm -hmm. Over the years, it has become a little damaged and dirty. And um, when I found the mural, I was so surprised to see where it was. I didn't know about it. Someone told me about it. And I was hoping we could display it where the public could more readily mm -hmm. see it. I felt like it was a visual that we had in our city that portrayed our beginning uh, history of Jean Ribot, the first people to come for religious pre freedom, a history that didn't seem to be very well known. And Lee Adams was the artist, and, and clearly um, this was very exciting for the city at the time because they had just celebrated the 400th. Uh, Lee Adams was he was located to paint this, you know, and create it a few years to, to be ready a few years after the 400th right. anniversary. And we just saw an image while you were talking briefly of a local. Uh, person, Pat Williams. Pat. So many people yes. know Pat. What a great guy. And he also modeled as one of the Tamuqua in that, uh, in that uh, mural. And so now it, it's, we've got a big celebration coming up May 1st. Tell what's going to happen and what's happening right now regarding the mural. Well, the mural has been taken down. It was taken down Thursday, mm -hmm. and it is now in Shelby's Cafe space at the first floor of the library. And I think we have an image of it right before you took it off the walls at the La Villa <laughs> School with the artist Jim Draper. Jim Draper. And I think that image will come up next. Now that's Pat Williams again. That's Good. Pat Williams. Oh, oh. And this is our Jean Rebeau character. Okay. And I spoke recently um, to the son of the man who portrayed the body on this character, and um, but not the face. We're still mm. wondering who that face belongs to. So um, maybe one of the viewers will I know. would love say. to find out. Here we see the mural coming off the wall. Right. The mural is 31 feet long, and it was on four stretchers. It was removed, rolled up, 
moved to the library and there Jim is going to daily be working on the restoration. The public is welcome to come by and watch that process. Probably about the 30th, it will be moved to the fourth floor. There's a wonderful 40 or 50 foot wall there by the history section that it will be displayed and uh, he will put it on the stretchers there and the public will be able to see it and ask questions, I hope, about our history and this Jean Rebeau history. And we are so grateful to those who've contributed to that, to the city for making this happen, the Cultural Council and the library for accepting that, the Historical Society for guiding us through that process. Well, thank, thank you, you, Emily. Oh, no. Thank you, Lynn, because you have been the advocate for this for so long. We may have one more image left of you standing with oh. it right before the uh, the mural came came down. Uh, but that, that's the good news. It sounds sort of sad, but it's going back it up. It was good. <laughs> and, and for the public's knowledge, this will be unveiled on May 1st at the downtown. There you are, Lynn, yes. with the mural. And artist Jim, Jim Draper and I are standing there just before it comes down. Mm -hmm. um, Sad because, of course, the school loves it, enjoying it because the public is going to see it more. It's going to be cleaned, and May 1st, 5 o'clock, be unveiled at the library, and fourth floor. May 1st, 5 o'clock, fourth floor of the library, the unveiling. And until that time, or roughly until that time, uh, people can go, can take the main entrance into the downtown library, and on certain days, certain times, they'll see Jim Draper right there in restoration yes. with this 30-foot mural, Rebeau's Landing, by Jacksonville's own Lee Adams. And Lee Adams, of course, he and his wife would die tragically uh, just some years later after the mural was painted. I don't remember the year. Do you recall? 1971. The, 1971. Lee and his wife Mimi would die in an accident on Roosevelt Boulevard. And by that time, you know, Lee had established himself as a beloved artist here in Jackson, Florida. In fact, his things were shown. Tell, tell people where his things were later shown. 1964 World's Fair. 19 the state of Florida decided to have a Florida pavilion and he was contracted to depict 11 parts of our economy and our history. And those 11 murals exist today. They were exhibited there at the World's Fair and they are in Jacksonville. And we will have you back to talk about those other murals perhaps sometime. And in the meantime, I want to remind people May 1st at the library, and if they'd like to come to the program following that at the Jacksonville Historical Society across from the arena, welcome to do so. Our program starts with a reception at 6.30. We'll have a lot of French dignitaries there, yes. the consulate, uh, and just so much more. And a wonderful and the wonderful story of Jean Rabot's landing on the St. John's exactly 450 years ago, May 1st. And not just what that's meant to our city, but what that's meant to our nation. And thank you again, Lynn, for being the true advocate of this story. And I want to thank everyone for listening. And for now, we're History, the Jacksonville History Show. See you next time.